So we now have uh, taken a pretty good run through with the uh, user interface of Maya. Now I want to move into uh, the actual creation of objects. So of course let's go uh, up here and we can create uh, let's just for example we'll start with the polygon here and we'll go to sphere and you'll see that we can uh, with the interactive creation turned off that we can just click sphere and it's gonna dump this guy right here in the center of the world and if we zoom down um, and we can rotate around you'll notice that we are currently in wireframe um, and just a side note from the uh, last video when <coughs> I, once I selected off an object how I couldn't select back and it was actually because uh, for whatever reason I actually had two of these uh, two of these buttons were selected at the exact same time uh, for whatever reason uh, so I just as you see here this is the uh, looking down here in the uh, help menu the select by hierarchy select by object type and component type so either one of these uh, right here will get you out of and give you the ability to select your object um, if we want to see this see this guy shaded uh, we actually will hit five on the keyboard and so you see that four is wireframe five is your um, uh, shaded uh, without textures uh, six is actually uh, shaded with textures. Seven is uh, shaded with the actual light sources. So I'm going to go back to five uh, real quick. And we'll get into lights and textures as we, uh, as we get further into everything. Uh, some of the things that are uh, worth noting here, uh, when we select on our objects, we see that we have over here in our channels, our channel box, we see we have a couple of parameters. Obviously, we can um, type in where exactly we want this guy to be positioned. Um, I also want you to see that if I select on the words, you notice that it actually loads up the gizmo for us. Um, and the interesting thing about this is if we select on the words and then come into our scene and middle mouse anywhere we don't have to be right on the gizmo I can middle mouse down here here and drag you notice that we are uh, manipulating <coughs> that parameter explicitly uh, so again I don't have to be on the gizmo I can just middle mouse and drag and affect it uh, directly over here uh, we also have the ability if I select uh, we'll notice that we have this input polysphere and if I select on that it gives us our basic controls for the object and so we see if I can just I'll just click right here on subdivision axis and I come over here in middle mouse see how I can uh, affect the axes and same thing with the height so I can interactively manipulate and create um, and adjust our shapes as a radius uh, so on and so forth so it's a um, a lot very very similar to the way Max has it um, but you know just a a few little minor differences here uh, something else that's worth noting I'm um, going right now I've got a sphere with as we see a very few subdivisions so we have a very low poly sphere if I hit 2 on my keyboard you'll see that it's actually smoothing the object and it's showing us the cage and if I hit 3 it just shows us the smooth version of our sphere now this is a uh, this is not like turbo smooth or mesh smooth as it is um, in uh, max um, this actually um, is not going to render this way it's actually going to render like this uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, a render. Um, so again, I'm just going to close the ones down that I don't use. So um, these little movie signs, I forgot exactly what they're called at the moment. Uh, but these are our render options. And I'm going to go to this guy right here. And we'll just do a quick render. And we see 
uh, that we have ourselves a low poly sphere. And if I hit 3 and render again, we see that it's a low poly sphere. So I uh, just wanted to uh, let you uh, be kind of aware that it's a, it's a good way to kind of see what this object is going to look smooth but in order to have it actually render that way you need to do a couple of things first uh, one we actually smooth the mesh so if I'm in my polygon module here and I go down to mesh I'm sorry edit mesh and there was mesh um, to, to, to smooth we see now we smooth it and if we render okay so uh, we either have to do that or I'm going to undo or have Maya 2. Uh, Maya 2009, and in Maya 2009, if I go to render here, and we see I can actually switch over to the hardware or software. Um, if I go to this guy, this is like your render scene dialog right here. Um, we can actually, and apparently it looks like I have. I do not have uh, mental ray set up at the moment. Um, so, well, actually, I'll get to that uh, here in a minute. Um, so, we see that these are some of the basic parameters when it comes to creating objects, uh, how we can access them over here. Uh, something else that's important to know, uh, this is our channel box, right? Um, these little buttons here actually show us. Um, so we see this is showing just the channel box, which is all of these. This one will show us just the layers, and this shows both of them combined. Um, and we can get in, we'll get into layers uh, more here down the road. But what I want uh, you to see when it comes to this object, uh, we have uh, the show or hide attribute editor. And you'll notice that here we have uh, some tabs up top. So this is the uh, P sphere. This is actually the uh, control for the, the position of it, um, pivot space, local space. So everything that's really kind of related to. Uh, this particular object as it relates to where it is in 3D space. This actually affects the uh, shape itself as we see P sphere shape. Our polysphere history, um, we see these are the actual controls for the node or the object that is uh, what it was created from was a sphere. In the initial shading group, uh, some of the controls for the material, and Lambert 1, which is the actual material itself. So, And we can actually add a lot more to this, but these are just some of the basic. Um, if we were to get, imagine a modify panel, uh, that's what your attribute editor would be. So right here, uh, this is your modify panel where we can really kind of get in there and get into some, some really uh, detailed work. Uh, with this particular shape. Um, your tool settings, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the tools for a second. I'm going to delete this guy and go create. Um, as you see we go over to our creation panel here. Uh, we can uh, set up and any of these little uh, preset, not presets, but the uh, um, settings box right here. We can make our you know we want to say okay I don't want to create them that much uh, let's put a round cap on and hit create so there we go of course we can always come down here and add to the actual object um, but what I want to talk about uh, real quickly is our tools so we see because uh, one of the things that I found to be very important when it came to my success with Max was uh, the local space and uh, view and world and stuff like that. If we double click on the tool, it opens up the tool settings, which is uh, the tool settings right here, which obviously only 
uh, works um, because we're on the, that particular tool but you see right here we have our move axes and I'm going to go to the ro rotate tool you'll see ro rotate um, automatically is in local space and if we rotate it we see the gizmo is following correctly uh, which is the way that we would expect it to be um, if I go back to the move tool we see local uh, doesn't follow the way that we were used to it in Max when it's actually object that we are looking for so we see that it will now follow the uh, object regar regardless of its orientation uh, it's now always going to be an object space uh, so that's an important tool scale also is um, going to be always local if I go back to rotate uh, I'm going to show you the snap rotate here so I'm going to actually go ahead and just delete this guy and I'm going to create polygon cylinder okay so we're back to where we were and the snap rotate for our uh, right here we see we can snap this guy on and we can set how um, what the angles are so we see now I've got this guy snapping to 90 degrees but you know of course you can have that set up however you want and let's say we'll go 10 which is probably a good one you notice that in max we get the little digits that float above the object telling us exactly um, how much it's being rotated uh, we don't get that option in Maya we have to always watch down here to see how far it's being rotated or we go to our channel box Oops. and we can like rotate a little bit this way and then watch over here to see uh, which axes we currently are rotating on and then we can just come over here and directly type in if we wanted to affect multiple we select all of them like this and say zero and that's how we can um, affect multiple at the same time we want to add um, five degrees to everything you know we're 20 degrees so those are just some important things I think that are worth noting when it comes to the move tool rotate uh, scale a lot of the basics that we are very much uh, familiar with when it comes uh, to max uh, if we wanted to just get this thing reset of course we just go over here in zero and he's now back to the way he was so that is our move uh, rotate scale a lot of those options that we're used to uh, very familiar with kinda how that we can use those and uh, work with them in Maya so move on to the next uh, video where we will uh, just continue on um, looking at some of the basics of Maya and I'm trying to get you guys as comfortable familiar with Maya uh, as smooth of a transition as possible from Max. So, see you in the next one.